Thank you for choosing a Napoleon pellet burning appliance. In this video, we will familiarize you with its operation, as well as some maintenance and troubleshooting tips. A renewable energy source, environmentally friendly, economical, convenient. These are just some of the reasons your Napoleon pellet stove or insert is the perfect solution to help heat your home. With a full 8,000 to 43,000 BTU per hour range, you can easily warm up almost any area. To increase or decrease the heat output, simply adjust the variable speed auger, which controls the feed rate of the pellets. The easy to use air control rod easily allows you to adjust the efficiency of the fire. The variable speed convection blower enables you to control just how much heated air you want distributed into the room. The heat exchange tubes heat the room air as it is drawn through the system by the convection blower and then distributes it back into the room for maximum efficiency. The strategically positioned cast iron burn pot provides the optimum conditions for the mixing of air and fuel through its engineered air induction ports, creating full, active, yellow dancing flames. The 55-pound pellet hopper capacity on the stove model and a 45-pound capacity on the insert will provide you with many hours of worry-free operation. An optional hopper extension for the pellet stove can increase its capacity to 100 pounds, giving you up to 100 hours of continuous use before refueling. With doors and decorative trivets available in the optional black paint, 24 karat gold, or satin chrome plated finishes, you can easily customize your stove or insert to suit your personal tastes. An optional phaser ceramic log or refractory brick panel set can help provide the finishing touch to an authentic wood burning look. Chapter 1 Operation your pellet burning appliance is designed to burn premium grade hard or soft wood pellets only. The performance of your appliance is directly related to the quality and moisture content of the pellets. Store pellets in a cool, dry area in a sealed, non-combustible container to prevent moisture absorption. Always avoid storing the pellets directly on concrete. For more information about pellets, ask your Napoleon dealer or visit the Pellet Fuel Institute website at www.pelletheat.org. To load the pellets, lift the hopper lid into the secured position. To avoid melting the plastic bag onto the hot surface of the pellet appliance, transfer the pellets into a non-combustible container, then carefully pour the pellets into the hopper. Try to prevent the fine dust from going into the hopper. Here's a tip. Hold a vacuum hose near the hopper or container whenever pouring the pellets to prevent any dust from going into the room. Before starting the appliance, confirm the burn pot is properly located and both the main door and ash drawer are secured and closed. Press and release the control door located on the right side of the stove or insert. If this is the first time the appliance has started or if it has previously run out of pellets, the auger will need to be purged. Press the start switch and then set the appliance to the optimum range. The light indicates the auger is turning. Pull the air control rod out approximately one half inch to allow sufficient air for combustion without cooling the pellets and the initial fire. Once the appliance is heated up, turn on and adjust the convection blower to the desired speed. To turn the appliance off, first turn off the pellet feed once the unit is cooled, you can turn off the convection blower dial. Chapter 2. Maintenance. Before conducting any maintenance on the appliance, be sure that you unplug its power cord and that you allow the stove or insert to completely cool. The extra large capacity ash pan on the NPS 40 pellet stove means you can run the stove longer before having to clean out the ashes. Remember to pour the ashes into a non-combustible container and store in a safe location until they are completely cool. The NP140 insert has no ash pan, so the firebox must be vacuumed out weekly. If the glass is not kept clean, permanent discoloration and or blemishes may result. Clean the glass door using a non-ammonia based glass cleaner, sold by your local Napoleon dealer. Wipe off any fingerprints or other marks on the plated surfaces. To prevent permanent marks on the surface, 
Use a non-abrasive cleaning solvent appropriate to the finish of the plated part on the appliance as recommended by your dealer. The frequency of the following schedule may vary depending upon how often the stove is used. Clean the heat exchange tubes every day to maximize the amount of heat transferred into your room. With the heater cooled or wearing heat resistant gloves, slide the heat exchange cleaner rod in and out several times to remove any buildup of ash. To open the main door, open both of the side panels, then release the two latches on the right side of the door and disengage the hooks from the door frame. It is important to keep the firebox clean of any ash buildup. With the heater cool, open the door and brush away any loose ash on the burn pot. Remove the burn pot, followed by the right and left louvers. Use a brush or vacuum to clean the ash. Make certain that all openings are clear of any ash buildup. Remove any ash on the ledge below the burn pot. Vacuum or brush out the firebox, air housing, and the opening at the top of the exhaust manifold. Once this is completed, replace the louvers and burn pot, making certain the locating notch lines up with the igniter. Also remember to check and clean out the ash pan as required. To prevent dust and pellet debris from collecting in the hopper, run the appliance until the pellets in the hopper have all been consumed. Once the appliance is cooled, vacuum out the hopper. Until you are familiar with how your appliance is performing, we recommend inspecting and cleaning the exhaust system at regular intervals. Disconnect the two wires from the motor. Remove the six nuts securing the exhaust blower and remove the motor. Discard the existing blower gasket, clean off the impeller blades using a soft brush, and vacuum out the blower housing. Install a new blower gasket before reinstalling the blower. Remove any porcelain or brick panels that have been installed. Remove the exhaust port doors and vacuum out the exhaust ports, removing as much ash as possible from both sides. When clean, replace the exhaust port doors. Clean the exhaust blower and vent systems at least once each year to prevent damage to the blower or blockages in the vent. Clean the exhaust tube by feeding a brush or rag through the inside of the tube and out the exhaust blower housing. Brush, then vacuum the exhaust ports, blower housing, and the blades of the exhaust blower. Carefully place the new blower mounting gasket around the opening and reinstall the blower and access panel. To access the exhaust blower on the insert, pull the insert out from the fireplace cavity and disconnect the venting from the exhaust collar. If installed as a top vent, remove the cover plate from the rear of the housing. If installed as a rear vent, remove the cover plate from the top of the housing. Vacuum the housing back towards the blower outlet. Inspect the rest of the vent system and have it cleaned as required. This should be performed by a qualified chimney sweep. After cleaning and reassembling the vent components, the joints must be resealed with RTV silicone rated to at least 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Check the seals of the appliance to ensure they're intact. Check for air leaks around the door, glass, and burn pot and ash pan. Test the door and ash pan seal by using a piece of paper in various locations. If the paper readily slides out, it indicates a poor seal. Inspect the gasket and replace as required. Chapter 3. Troubleshooting. Troubleshooting procedures should only be performed by qualified technicians or installers. Before troubleshooting, always confirm that all components are free of ash buildup and that the appliance is unplugged from the receptacle to prevent electrical shock or damage to the components. Here is how the system works. The start switch is pressed, which trips a timer in the power relay that sends power to the igniter, the exhaust blower, and the auger feed relay. The power relay will shut off all power if the low limit switch does not sense 140 degrees Fahrenheit within 15 minutes. The ignition switch shuts off the igniter when it senses 120 degrees Fahrenheit within the 15 minute period. When it senses airflow within the exhaust system, the vacuum switch conducts electricity to the auger feed control relay, which intermittently cycles the auger feed motor on and off. 
we recommend setting the convection blower in the low to medium range to minimize the noise level. If left in the off position, the override switch will eventually sense 160 degrees Fahrenheit and the blower will turn on to high speed until the temperature falls below 160 degrees to prevent overheating of the appliance. When the override is engaged, the convection blower speed cannot be adjusted lower. If the convection blower fails to cool down the appliance, the high limit switch will shut down the auger feed when it senses 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This switch must be manually reset so that the reason the appliance overheated can be determined and corrected. To turn off the system normally, simply turn off the auger feed control switch. Once all the pellets in the burn pot have been burned and the stove has cooled down, the exhaust blower will turn off. If the convection blower was turned on manually, it will also need to be turned off. If the appliance does not come on when the start switch is pressed, check the power supply. If the exhaust blower is operating, but the auger feed does not respond when turned on, check the vacuum switch, vacuum tube, and exhaust blower vent system to confirm they are not blocked. Check that the high limit switch has not been tripped. If the pellets are feeding into the burn pot, but they are not lighting, check the alignment of the burner with the igniter and confirm that the igniter is glowing. Make certain the holes in the burn pot are not blocked. If the appliance has failed to start or stay lit after 15 minutes, reduce the amount of combustion air until the fire has established itself. Repress the start switch to begin the cycle again. If the fire is small and the auger feed control fails to increase the flame size, check the auger to ensure that it has not become partially blocked. Also check the quality of the pellets, which should be hard and dry. If the pellets are soft or gummy, it indicates that they have been exposed to moisture and must be replaced. Only use dry pellets. Make sure the air control has also been properly set for the feed rate being used. For more detailed instructions on how to troubleshoot the various components, consult the installation instruction troubleshooting section or have a qualified service person check the system. Being familiar with your system and following a regular maintenance schedule will provide you with years of worry-free enjoyment of your Napoleon pellet burning appliance. Thank you for choosing Napoleon.